me, Jennifer, and I have for you this day in history, May 17th. In 1954, Brown versus Board of Education is decided. In 1769, George Washington <coughs> criticizes taxation without representation. In 1873, writer Dorothy Richardson, pioneer of a stream of consciousness, is born. In 1965, the FBI laboratory weighs in on the dirty lyrics of Louie Louie. In 2000, final episode of Beverly Hills 90210 airs. In 1974, LAPD raid leaves six SLA members dead. In 1970, Norwegian ethnologist Thor Heyerdahl sails papyrus boat. In 2004, first legal same-sex marriage performed in Massachusetts. In 1885, Apache leader Geronimo flees Arizona reservation, setting off panic. In 1973, televised Watergate hearings begin. In 1943, the Memphis Bell flies its 25th bombing mission. That's interesting. And let us find a word for today. Your word for the day is impresario, I-M-P-R-E-S-A-R-I-O, noun, Italian, 18th century. First definition, a person who organizes and often finances concerts, plays, or operas. Second definition, the manager of a musical, theatrical, or operatic company. In examples in a sentence. My grandfather was a, was a vaudeville impresario who produced an EMC touring variety shows. The impresario heard Sharon's voice and invited her to tour with his opera as a chorus singer. That's really cool. And let's go with something a little different today. General generis, generic ization. Genericization. Words you didn't know were brand names. More often than shoppers might realize, everyday products were, are named after a brand. Even though there might be a generic name, such as facial tissue, the company name has become shorthand for the product, Kleenex. This phenomenon, phenomenon is called genericization and happens when a trademark or brand name is so widely used that it becomes the identifier for the product. It has happened with the Band-Aid brand, now used to describe any sort of adhesive bandage, as well as with Q-tips for cotton swabs, and of course Kleenex. These are some of the more well-known examples, but there are plenty of other brands, products you lightly use all the time, that are that now exemplify generic genericization. Vaseline. Vaseline is a brand name for petroleum jelly, a multi-use product found in virtually every drugstore. Today, it is generally understood that Vaseline refers to any petroleum jelly-based product, even though competitors such as Aquaphor serve the same purpose. So why is Vaseline the chosen term? Uh, time, 150 years ago, Vaseline was the first commercial petroleum jelly, thus becoming the most popular brand, which remains today. Styrofoam. Styrofoam is the brand name of a polystyrene foam product created by the Dow Chemical Company. The term is often used to describe any foam container, especially of the food and beverage varieties. But these containers are actually made of expanded polystyrene foam, not styrofoam at all. The real styrofoam is manufactured by Dow for building insulation. Dumpster. The term dumpster was coined in November of 1936 when George Dempster, Dempster introduced his line of large garbage bins, which would be picked up by a special truck in Knoxville, Tennessee. He named the bins after himself, calling them Dempster Dumpsters. Thus, the dumpster became a genericized term for a mobile garbage receptacle in the United States. In the UK and other English banking countries, they are usually called skip bins. Popsicle. It's true, Popsicle is a trademarked brand name for ice pops owned by Unilever. 
The history of the popsicle begins over 100 years ago in 1905 when 11-year-old Frank Epperson invented flavor ice on a stick and called them Epsicles. Using the root of icicle, Epperson later patented the popsicle in 1923 and eventually Unilever bought it, soon created other product lines like the creamsicle and the fudgesicle. Frisbee. America, most Americans refer to a plastic flying disc as Frisbees, but the term is actually the brand name of Mattel toy manufacturer's patented disc. Mattel bought out bought the toy from Wham-O in 1994, the first company to produce them in 1957. The unique name stems from the Frisbee Pie Company in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where students would throw empty pie tins at each other yelling, Frisbee. The nickname for the flying discs caught on and wham -O decided to use it for their new Frisbee toy. The wham -O designer also developed the concept of Frisbee Golf, another extension of genericization, because the popular game could be played with any type of disc. Velcro. Velcro received the genericization uh, treatment because hook and loop fastener doesn't quite roll off the tongue. Velcro is a trademark owned by the UK's Velcro companies. The original design was named by combining the words velvet and crochet, an apt description of the two sides of the product. In a satirical music video, the company lawyers beg customers to stop using the name Velcro to refer to generic products. The Don't Say Velcro campaign attempts to educate customers on the difference between their Velcro products and other similar products in an attempt to prevent genericization of the brand. Well, I thought you guys might find that interesting. I know that I did. Now, on to your quote for today. Your quote for the day comes from Isaac Newton. Truth is never to be found in simplicity. Truth is never to be found in simplicity. And let us go on to our daily devotional. Today is the 17th. And the 17th is a faith muscle. Even a small amount of faith can do big things for God. Faith is like a muscle that grows stronger as it is exercised. When you believe God for a small thing and he does it, the next time you can believe for a bigger thing. Objects as the mulberry tree in the statement, Obey faith because everything is under God's power. Believe God and if you must start small, then do so. Have faith and see what he does. Exercise that faith muscle. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, then you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Luke chapter 17 verse 6. Think of a time when you saw your faith in action. What happened? How did you see God move? Did your faith grow stronger after that? Did that help you believe that you can trust God for even bigger things? Good questions. Good questions. And on to your holidays for today. It is National Walnut Day, National Cherry Cobbler Day, National Graduation Tassel Day, National Idaho Day, it is Pack Rat Day, and it is Ellie Winter Day, or L, L Winter Day, and Luann de Lesseps Day. So why not celebrate Idaho? while getting rid of the old and making space for the new for Pack Rack Day, while eating some cherry cobbler and having a few walnuts. I think that would be a lot of fun. In the meantime, please stay safe, be kind to one another, and as always, happy yearning. Bye now.